Welcome back to the Papa Meat Channel. How you doing? How you doing? Come on and sit on down. I am a lucky, lucky dog. I got to see the Little Mermaid today. Here, here's a picture of me at the theater. It's great. But I found something very perplexing is that when I sat down to watch the movie, it really wasn't what the trailers expected. And I found out that I was actually watching Asylum's The Little Mermaid. <laughs> Do you know who Asylum is? You probably will say, no, I've never heard of that. But you probably have definitely seen some of these kinds of movies. They basically take a popular franchise and then they will release a movie that's kind of like it in hopes that people mistakenly, you know, click the video because they're like, oh, it's the alligator movie I wanted to see. But the weird thing about Asylum too is they usually do action and horror films. And this is their only children's film, I'm pretty sure. Fact check. <laughs> I think it's just because The Little Mermaid is public domain now. And with this new Little Mermaid movie coming out and how much of a success it is, they're uh, trying to hop on the train. So, you know, I thought to myself, you know what, sure. It isn't Disney's Little Mermaid, but how bad could it be? So I decided to sit down and watch it. And it is arguably, dare I say, one of the worst animated films I've ever seen in my life. Dare I say, one of the worst films I've ever seen in my life. And Saber Spark, fuck you for giving me this link. <laughs> Saber Spark is the guy who gave me the fucking link. So if, if, if you're wondering why did I watch this, blame him. But essentially this movie is about, is it Ariel still? It's about our new Ariel. Her name's Saria. She kind of looks like Zendaya and she wants to go up. I want to go up and out. It's kind of the whole vibe of it. I want to go up and I want to go out. I'm going up there. My sisters went when they turned 15. She's having a good time with her Sebastian the Crab-esque person, except this time it's a turtle named Sheldon. Help! Help! Help me! And they decide to go up and see a boat for the first time because they're like, it's a boat. And Sheldon's like, <laughs> And they go up to the boat and there's some fireworks and you immediately start to realize very quickly that everything about this movie is going to be extremely uncanny. Oh! One person animated the whole thing, Michael Johnson, which at the end credits, it's very funny. It says all animation and, and renders done by Michael Johnson. So MJ, my boy out there, you know, hit the ha huh? and he hit the he. Right? But it, it's all very uncanny. Whenever you see cheap animation films, usually the characters are always moving because of mocap. So they're always doing this. They got like Parkinson's disease, all of them. They're just like sitting there and their eyes are really big. I believe also that all the lip sync was done with some kind of AI tracker, like a, a motion capture thing. So everybody's mouth is very wide. <laughs> And they talk like this and they see their gums and everybody's eyes are just always open. There's no like emotions of like, oh, oh. you know, Judy Hopps finding out she's pregnant like that one comic. Oh, oh my God. And she has to get an abortion or whatever. And we see that we meet up with Lucas. He's our uh, guy, human guy that, that, uh, what's her name again? It's like diarrhea. Saria Diarrhea. That's the only reason I remember. I'm like, kind of sounds like diarrhea. I have a couple of thoughts about this movie before I go into it. Which one? This movie is about the most down bad people I've ever seen in, uh, in a film ever. Saria wants to get fucked so bad. And Lucas is just trying to find some person to marry and fuck so bad. So it's just about two people who are just like desperately trying to fuck and they find each other. But it could also read like the young Jeffrey Epstein story. Lucas, who's a prince, is on this island and he meets a woman who can't talk and that he falls in love with Jeffrey and Jessalyn Maxwell. It's about Jeffrey Epstein's takeover of the island and his, you know, his rise to power. Is that what Asylum is trying to do? I don't know. Lucas is just like having a celebration. It's his birthday and his dad gives him a giant statue of himself. As he's sitting there talking about it, we get some uncanny animation, but a storm comes in. Brace yourself! Statue falls off and Lucas falls off with it. And Diarrhea decides to go and help this human because she's like, I have to find Lucas. But it's like, when did you hear his name? She just kind of randomly knows his name, but she swims down and grabs him and Lucas gets saved. And in his haze, he sees her, but he's kind of passed out. And he vows that whoever saved his life will marry him, which I thought was funny because it's kind of like the trope of a princess, except it's for the Prince Charming kind of guy. So I was like, wow, way to subvert the expectations. Way to really take the princess tropes and really throw them on their head there, Asylum. Appreciate that. So Diarrhea goes back and she goes to her family. It's like her grandma and her dad are there. And Poseidon is like, Jack, you giga chat. But also, you, it, it, the, he, she goes into the palace. There's stairs. <laughs> Think about that. They're all underwater and there's stairs. Like, you don't, you're not using those steps. What the hell? 
<laughs> there's a ton of steps. And basically she says, I want to go and see the humans. And her dad's like, fuck, no, you're not, you crazy bitch. What are you talking about? But she's like, you know what? I'm going to do it anyways. I'm going to go see, see a spooky witch. You know, we have some dialogue with her and her sisters. Whenever a person isn't talking and there's background characters, they just, they like stand very awkwardly and they're rendered out at like 720p. And that's the one thing you'll find with this is there's like a lot of textures, I think. And I think it's supposed to emulate like that you're in water and not just like in a hollow space, but it just comes off like the whole thing is just like a 720p like render, which I know my boy, my boy, Michael Johnson isn't rendering 720p. All right. Once again, he's hitting the, he's hitting the, uh, and he's hitting the, he. as diarrhea swing away, we get some funny like bodyguards, but they're all just the dad's model, but they just have like very tiny helmets on and they're just like swimming awkwardly. Luckily, diarrhea escapes her father's clutches and she goes and sees the nasty sea witch Ravina. <laughs> <laughs> The voice actor and the performance for Ravina should be like a crime against humanity. Wonderful. Luckily, if you don't. <laughs> Before we even get to that, man, there's so many. Like, I feel like I'm a fucking like shell shock veteran having flashbacks of war. Diarrhea swims over to Ravina's like house, but there's like a bunch of tiny groups like grabbing at her. Korea. But she goes inside to Ravina's house and Ravina's just like having like an epileptic seizure trying to talk. Out of everybody in the film, her rig, I don't know why, is like, I think it's because her off color eye makes it look lazy. So she's just like, she like moves like this and she's like, ah, you, you wanna go up to the top of the surface? Like I said, it's a, it should be a war crime. It should be a crime against some kind of, it should, it should, it's just impossible. It's impossibly bad. Diarrhea says like her pussy's real warm and juicy and she's like, I gotta get fucked. You gotta get me up there, I need legs. So R R R Rivera, or whatever the fuck, the chain smoking witch, his name was, I forgot what it was. She's like, oh sure, I'll make a potion for you, but I have to take your voice. So we don't hear from our main character for the next hour and 10 minutes of this 90 minute long film. So she you know, says yes. She goes on shore and Lucas finds her there. He's like, hey, how's it going? And when I say this is not to be offensive, I don't mean for this to be offensive, but it's going to be a, a harder pill to swallow just because of the information I have to get across to you. I have not in any movie been more offended for the disabled, mentally disabled community in my entire life. When diarrhea comes on shore, she can't talk, but they don't do proper face animations. So she's just doing this like. <laughs> and he's like, oh, you can't speak. And she's like. <laughs> and you're like, this is reading like somebody with Down syndrome so bad, like so abrasively offensive <laughs> that I almost turned it off. I didn't almost turn it off, but still I was, it was, sh I mean, shocking. Lucas is very quick to be like, oh, this person's hot. I don't give a fuck if you can talk or not. Hey, let's go back to my castle. He is a person that probably has once, he, I, this, I'm not even trying to be offensive. I just, he, he is probably also special needs as well. The way that they cut this together and all of the editing and stuff, it just, there could not be more of a way that is you could read it any other way but it sh he goes up and he's just like introducing her to his family and you can kind of tell that he's like vibing with them they do like a weird dance Th that's another part they go back to the place and you're like okay well maybe that's just like awkward it's not going to be this weird offensive down syndrome thing the whole time but when they go inside she goes up to the piano and she just starts doing <laughs> and she's like smiling she's like I'm at a, I mean, literally at a loss for words. And then Lucas is like, what are you doing? You nut, you silly little girl. And the mom comes in, she's like, oh, my special little guy. Let me play you a nice song. And they start to dance and then they go to the library. And in the library, I was immediately thinking because of the amount of mental disability, he's like, oh, any book that you could ever want. But really, I just thought it was every One Piece manga <laughs> on every bookshelf. He's like, ah, One Piece, as long as the eyes can see, it's actually about a pirate named Luffy. He's made a rubble. How did that happen? Yo ho ho, he took a bite of gum gum. In the library, we find out that Lucas also, he said, I used to think I was part merman. And you're like, the, if I had a manila envelope for evidence of this person being <laughs> mentally disabled, I would just be like, you know, 
grab the paper and just stack it in with the rest of the evidence, dude. But the best part of this scene is when he's like, you know, oh, my great grandfather gave me, you know, he started this kingdom and I'm going to inherit it. But they use a picture from a sailor from like the 1890s. And this is like medieval castle stuff. But they just use JPEG, like a photo of a guy of a sailor from the 1890s. It's so stupid. It's so stupid. That just came back to my memory. Then we get one of our first times where Sheldon talks to this bird named Marty. Rats! Get off my perch! It's actually pretty impressive to see who could be the worst character in the film. Sheldon, I think, squeaks by a little bit, but Marty is, god damn it, Marty is just... He's awful. There is one funny part though, where it's very abrasive and it's in your face. And I laughed really hard where Sheldon has like a gotcha moment to him. And then Marty's response is, ha, gotcha. So that was that came out of, that came out of nowhere and it made me laugh really hard. From there though, once again, diarrhea. She can't talk, but her sisters are coming up and they're like, "Where the fuck are you? Have you been?" And they're just talking to her from the ocean. Diarrhea is on a balcony, and you can see probably the top of her rib cage up. And they come up and they're like, "Look, she has legs." And it's like, "How did you see that? Did you have X-ray vision? How did you get? How did you ponder that one out of there?" And they're like, "Okay, well, be sure whenever you spread your legs tonight, really, you know, let him ejaculate as much as he possibly can into your pussy, because that's what you're gonna have to do to secure the kingdom." So the girls go back to their dad, and they're like, "Hey, by the way, diarrhea. She drank a potion. She has legs. She's getting her fucking asshole licked, and her pussy is being destroyed right now by Lucas. He also has Down syndrome." What? It's like that movie, The Other Sister. Remember that movie? Mom, is this a Sex talk. <laughs> it's about a girl who gets a, she's a Down syndrome person who gets a Down syndrome boyfriend. It doesn't matter. It's basically the other sister up on land is essentially what it is. And the dad's like, what? We can do a super cut of all the times the dad says what just really quick somehow. Just put that right here. You did what? 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 She did what? Do you have a fucking hearing problem? It's insane. And the grandma who basically looks the exact same, like you could just say that's his wife. I thought it was his wife the whole time, but it's his mom. They're like, we have to go visit the witch. And when they do that, there's like two cyclones. I think it's supposed to be the like some kind of like treacherous defense or trench. And it's like, that's why no one goes over there. But you're in the ocean and there's nothing else around. And it's like, just swim around it. But they don't swim around it and they go through and the old grandma's like, Ooh! getting sucked in on these like ps2 graphic god bless your heart michael johnson first off i just want to say this is nothing against michael johnson i just want to say that right now shame on you asylum for making michael johnson do something so stupid but they have like one moment and it's supposed to be i think it's supposed to be like oh no but it lasts for maybe eight seconds and they're like okay we made it out once again you see baby groots grabbing at him and they're like get the fuck off me and they slap him <laughs> <laughs> and they like go in and they talk to uh, Ravina, the uh, teenage witch. And she says, yeah, I took your daughter's voice. And uh, if she doesn't fall in love and like basically Lucas, he has Down syndrome. She he has to physically say, I love you. And if he doesn't, she gets trapped in the deepest trench, whatever that means. No. And they're like, what the fuck? Fuck you. Reverse it. And she's like, nope, it's done. And he's like, oh, OK, she's like, it doesn't matter what you do to me. Uh, it's done. It's a done deal. And the, the, all the, all Poseidon or Diarrhea's dad does is he's just like, God damn it. Change her back right now. Or I'll, I'll... Yo, what? What? And it's like, why don't you fucking kill her still? Who cares if she can't, if she can't reverse it, then what the fuck? He's like, damn it. And he just leaves. He just leaves. Imagine somebody's like, hey, by the way, I gave your son cancer. Okay. There's nothing that can be done. It's incurable. So even if you fucking hit me in the face or did whatever, it doesn't matter. It's not going to change your son's cancer. And you're just like, God, okay. And you're just like, walk out. No, you would be like, I'm, I'm going to fucking skin you alive, you piece of shit. But no, that doesn't happen. You'll pay for this. You have no power here. Today's video is sponsored by Bad Dragon. Bad Dragon has been an ongoing uh, supporter of this channel. We've done countless ads for them every month for almost a year now, and I can't recommend this brand enough. Are you trying to spice things up in your bedroom for mommies and daddies, or maybe for yourself or a friend with consent? Then feel free to check out Bad Dragon. You have to be 18 or older. You have to be 18 or older. Please be 18 or older. Bad Dragon makes amazing products at an amazing quality, and the company could not be any fucking cooler, nicer, funner, 
people to be around. We love Bad Dragon on this channel. So please, if you're trying to spice up the bedroom a little bit, go to baddragon.com and consider supporting an amazing fucking company with amazing products. Treat yourself right or treat your wife or husband or whoever right. Put something in your holes and go to baddragon.com. Thank you, Bad Dragon, for always sponsoring the channel and back to the video. We kind of cut back, except uh-oh, diarrhea has a problem. A new girl comes in. She kind of reminded me of Bam Margera's wife and Bam's on Holy Union. Remember that show on MTV? And her whole thing is fashion. She does not shut the fuck up about how she wants to go to school and fashion. I get inspirations for clothing patterns. I love seeing the clothes, dresses, and suits. That's why I love design. I don't know much about fashion. But we do have a very, like, weird forced marriage thing that's very amicable. You think you'd be like, no, you can't tell me who I need to marry, right? That's kind of the standard thing. But the dad comes up, he's like, Lucas, this is who you're going to marry. Wait, you rescued me. And then, you know, uh, diarrhea, she can't say anything. And she was like, <laughs> she keeps tapping her chest. <laughs> and he's like, oh, that's a coincidence. Cool. Yeah. All right. I'll marry you. That's fine. And she's like, but by the way, once we get married, I got to go back to school because I like fashion. But I still have to finish school. And he's like, oh, okay. That's fine. She's like, no, I, I need to go back to school because fashion's my life. That's not a problem. I did not say that's a problem. And it's funny because they have a moment where they're like walking through this garden. And he's like, well, don't you like horseback riding? She's like, mm, I'd rather just stay inside and work on fashion. He's like, oh, okay. What about like, uh, you know, uh, riding horses or some, or did I say that the first time? Or what about, uh, you know, just rolling around in the dirt and just kind of like going on a hike or an adventure? <laughs> Absolutely not. I can't let anything happen to my precious sewing fingers. No, I would rather just work on fashion. But I love boats. He's like, oh, great. I love sailing too. We should go sailing. She's like, mm. I mean, I would, but I would rather work on fashion and I don't really like sailing. This scares me. And you're like, well, this isn't going to work out. While this is happening, diarrhea sisters confront the witch as well. And they're like, you know, our dad just came back. He is fucking pissed. Once again, they also swim past those Groot things. The Groot things cry, grab at him. I'm Groot. They slap the shit out of him again. And uh, they talk to Ravina. And this time they're like, what do, what do we have? To, what the fuck do we have to do? Cut the shit. And she's like, you know, once again, Parkinson's like crazy. And uh, we find out that the whole reason that she's pissed off is because she's bald. That's a literal plot point. She takes off her hair and she's bald. And the only way that she's going to help him is if the girls drink a potion that will give her her old hair back but a mermaid's hair is almost as important as her tail and the mermaids are like that sucks because mermaid hair doesn't grow back so we'd be really bummed i think it's supposed to be like this is a big thing like oh what a what a, you know this is the, the the weight of this situation so they decide to do it they drink the potion and like they just get like kind of hot short hair girl hair like they all look really fine and like, they look fine but it's supposed to be like oh my god look at us we're freaks what are we lesbians now because our hair so short okay well i guess i'm gonna have to eat your pussy now because i'm a lesbian because my hair is short and then uh ravina her hair is like all long and black and she's like by the way fuck you i just tricked you i'm gonna go kill some bitches and she decides to leave and they're like while this is happening, Sheldon is autistically talking about things. I don't even know what the fuck Sheldon's doing. He's like, Sheldon's pretty much there just to have exposition to where whoever, like, I mean, me, me, the brain dead person that decides to fucking watch this, understands what's going on. He's like, so pretty much you can't talk and the other girl's gonna get married to him? I mean, yeah, that's a bummer. You must be so bummed. You're bummed because you can't talk and you're no longer a mermaid and you're gonna be trapped in hell forever, right? That's what's gonna happen. That's what's happening. That's pretty much what happens. That's what I've been trying to tell you. Yeah, but you know, luckily enough, you can't be mad at Lucas because he's stupid and you can't be mad at his new wife. She's just trying to get hers too. And God damn it, she's trying to go to fashion school. I gotta go to fashion school after this. And she's basically like, <laughs> She walks in and she's talking to essentially what she appears to be like a, a nitwit, a brain dead person, a smooth brain person. She's like, I can't wait to get my pussy pounded so hard by Lucas later. Uh, I also can't wait to go back to school. I'm going back to my school after this. And she's like, oh, also you could go to school too if you want. I bet you they have special programs. And <laughs> diarrhea kind of just keeps doing the point thing. Sheldon says, I can't stand this. I, she's, she needs to be the one getting her clit smashed with his tongue and dick. I have to go back and talk to her dad. So Sheldon goes back and talks to the king. And it's like a big hectic thing because she has like an hour to have this thing happen before she gets trapped into the trench, whatever that means. I'm just giving you the information I have, right? The king is pissed. 
He's like, you should have told me. And it's like, I feel like we can have this conversation later. You betrayed my trust, Sheldon. And he's like, okay, well, your daughter is going to go to the trench, which in this universe is, that's, there's a lot of weight to that. <laughs> and he's like, fine, let's go back to Ravina's. And they go back through the water tunnel thing. <laughs> it's the exact same shot. And I'm like, didn't the fever, we've already done this thing where you get sucked into it. Just go around. There's a whole ocean just swim around the tornadoes. But once again, we go past the Groots, get the fuck off me, freak. And we go inside and all, all the magic books that would have helped her daughter are in Ravina's place. Ravina had them all along. They kind of do this reveal where it's like, oh my God, she stole the books. And I'm like, wasn't she evil the whole time? Or am I high? Did she not just tell you like, hey, I gave your kid cancer and Down syndrome. Sorry, no, no, I'm supposed to tell you earlier and you didn't really care apparently I, which made me think like oh when we first visited them the king and the grandma must have been like okay well i guess this crazy bitch is on spring break then okay well she's having the time of her life we're gonna go home i never went looking for them because i never had reason to until now but now uh, they're like, well, we have to help her out because our daughter's in trouble. She's going to go to the trench, whatever that means. We cut back and it's the wedding. Feels very reminiscent of like the Mario movie and like uh, Shrek. A lot of these fantasy movies do this kind of shit. I haven't actually seen Little Mermaid, the 2D one and ever. It might even be reminiscent of that. I don't know what happens in that one. Ravina shows up to the wedding and starts fucking shit up. We do have a weird moment where the fashion designer chick, I forgot her name, I'm just gonna call her Betty. She rips off her dress and you're like, God damn. It's like, it's very aggressive. She rips it off into like a girl boss kind of like outfit. It kind of looks like a Jersey Shore outfit. Like what I would imagine, like, uh, I almost said Paula Dean. Is Paula Dean in the Jersey Shore? <laughs> Paula Dean's the racist <laughs> chef lady. <laughs> Whatever. They get attacked and then uh, diarrhea. She kind of has this moment where she's like, you guys belong together. I don't need to have my pussy smashed. I thought I did, but I'm willing to let it go. And she grabs a sword and she starts charging at Ravina, who is like 40 feet tall now. Saria! I'm like, what are you going to do with that? Which is answered very quickly when she just gets thrown into the ocean and she goes to the trench. Nope. Help! Help! Remember the trench? Oh... God, which the trench is just like an open body of water that is, I think it's supposed to be deep because all of the fish are like, they, they, they're lit up, but there's still plenty of sunlight above. So then she's like, oh, excuse me. Can you help me get back above? What the fuck does that angler fish say? He's like, fish, follow me. Oh, thank you. And he, they start and I'm like, wouldn't you just know how to go up though? You can see the light just go up towards that. Uh, but then a green PS2 tunnel sucks her back down. So it's like, oh, she's stuck. Isn't that a bummer? From there, Lucas, he gets swatted around. I think he has a safety helmet and bib on and he's getting swatted around. And Ravina's kind of just like, her eyes are doing this thing. I remember in this part particularly, they really like the rig of her eyes are just like all over the place. The sisters get turned to baby Groots before, but we have them turned back when we find out that the grandmother practiced black magic and she too was a witch one day. And then she transforms all the Groots that were, that people were like, get the fuck off me. Back to normal. So they were all mermaids and mermen. So it's like, how long have they been these creatures and no one has cared? But now we have reinforcements and they decide to fight and the fight lasts, I think like maybe three minutes. The grandma shows up very randomly. Just She's just there, just a fucking Goku teleports to diarrhea, saves her and then brings her back into the fight and they basically trap Ravina into a tube. <laughs> This all, this all probably sounds uh, very stupid. As we go, the day is saved and, she, you know, diarrhea, she has her, she's she's a mermaid again, so she can talk. She's like, I'm the one who saved you, Lucas. And he's like, oui, oui. And I'm kidding. <laughs> he's like, I could have swore I knew that. And then we get a very funny line where the grandma's like, Lucas, have you ever thought about being a mer person? Yes. Remember that from earlier on? And he's like, oh my God, I have. Daddy, can I be a mer person? And he's like, I don't see why not, son. Be a merman. So he gets transformed into a mermaid. And he uh they they kiss and it's happily ever after after that. Oh, but the girl I was gonna say also, she says, No, you guys be together. I want to go back to school anyways. And it's like, you don't think? 
Besides, I really miss my school. You never brought that up once in the fucking movie. But uh, watching Lucas get turned into the mermaid and then just like dive in the water and everyone's like, yay. As if, and the family's just totally fine with it. They're like, <laughs> You crazy kid. You were once human. Now you're a freak. Go into the ocean and have fun. You know, fun. We'll never see you again. We can never, literally almost never see you again unless you kind of just pop your head out of the water and talk to us. That's fun. Uh, but the movie ends. They live happily ever after. What a concept. And as you know, it, the, the first thing that you see and almost the biggest joke of all is the title sequence. The very first line in the titles is all animation was done and rendered by Michael Johnson. They had one person animate this entire film. And I gotta say, hats, hats off. Hats off to Michael Johnson. You are a king once again. You have the uh, you have the uh, and the mm. And Michael Johnson, you have solidified yourself into the MJ legacy. This unironically was one of, it was very funny. It could be, I would, I think that you could probably do a very fun drinking game with this. Like I could see in the future people making this a drinking game. Like anytime the dad says what, you take a drink, you'd be fucking obliterated. Anytime that diarrhea looks like she is maybe a little mentally ill, you take a drink. Well, I mean, you would have alcohol poisoning. I'm just saying that this movie is ripe for a fun drinking game to be made, be made out of it. And I honestly feel like this movie was funner to watch than probably going to see the movie that tried to be good, which I could be wrong. I, the Little Mermaid movie could be cool, but I just feel like this is this is pretty funny. This is this is a good, this was a funny one. If you, ha if you somehow find a link to this, uh, be sure to watch it. It's very funny, but it's also one of the worst movies I've ever seen in my life. So fair warning to you. Uh, thank you. Uh, I don't know. Said it. But all in all, that is the Little Mermaid Asylum Edition. Uh, what did you guys think? Did you guys think that you'll watch this movie? You won't? Okay. Bye. <laughs> Hey guys, be sure to check out my trading cards I have available in the style of Garbage Pail Kids. Each pack comes with all 17 cards, but the first thousand people get a Melvin card. We're talking about Yokai Bob the Builder. We got the Elon Musk as the bird. All kinds of crazy cards here. You can look at these. Ooh, oh my God. Oh, that's a good one. This sale goes until June 28th, so be sure to pre-order yours now. Thanks.